Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, in this one we're going to be talking about the Python built-in functions, any and all, uh, and how they work. I'm going to show you my, my own implementation of both of them. Um, but yeah, let's jump into it. Okay, cool. So there are two built-ins in Python, so if we open up Python, uh, called any and all, and they're both built-in functions. And what they do is they allow you to chain together uh, a bunch of conditions about stuff. So um, the any built-in returns true if any of the things inside of it are true, uh, and the all returns, you know, returns true if all of the things inside of it are true. Uh, now note there are two kind of edge cases here which often trip up uh, beginners, but I think they're useful to understand from like a mathematical perspective and as, as well from an implement, uh, implementation perspective, which is that uh, any over empty things, if we just do any, uh, I just we have to give it an argument, uh, any of an empty thing is false. So this is saying that none, none of these are true. Um, and all of an empty thing is true. Um, which is to say that, you know, it's it's vacuously true that all of the things are truthy inside of this. Uh, now this, you know, this becomes much easier to implement from the, you know, base case and mathematical perspective, uh, which I'll show as we implement this. Um, but it can be a little bit confusing. Uh, but yeah, let's show let's show any and all for you know other cases as well. So you can pass any iterable into these. I'm going to use tuples here. Uh, you could use generators, lists, even dictionaries if you wanted to, or comprehensions, or all sorts of stuff. Uh, but I'm just going to use tuples because they're going to be the easiest to uh, represent. Um, but yeah, if, if all the things in these are falsy, you'll see that any is going to return false. If any of them are truthy, we will get true back. And it does short circuit evaluation. So um, you can't really show it here. I guess we can show with the generator. Uh, def gen, let's see, print for one uh, before first. And we do yield zero. And then before second. And then we do yield one. And before third, yield zero. So if we were to run any on this, it'll first try and get this first value. This won't be truthy, so it'll go on to the next one. Uh, but as soon as it finds one that's truthy, it knows that it doesn't need to process the rest of the generator. Uh, so this can be efficient if you, you know, have some sort of generator-based thing that you're checking for some truthiness in there. Um, and again, if we run any gen, uh, oops, gen, uh, we'll see that, yeah, we printed before first and before second, but not before third because it, it stopped before that. Now note, uh, if you're passing a concrete type into it, all of these will be evaluated before this is actually, you know, computed. So if you were doing something like, uh, you know, you would write an if statement that's like, let's say n equals zero, and we did if n does not equal zero and one divided by n is equal to two, is equal to 0.5 or something like that. Um, uh, print n was two. I don't know, something like that. So you can see, like, here I'm using short circuit evaluation to prevent a division by zero here. Uh, but if we did the same thing with, you know, any or all here, we could say, you know, if all n does not equal zero and one divided by n is equal to 0.5. Um, both of these operands in this tuple are going to be evaluated before all even comes into play. And so you'll see uh, n was two. You'll see that we get that zero division error. Uh, because this gets evaluated. So there's, there isn't short circuit evaluation for the actual expressions here. It only comes into play for, you know, like generators and such. Um, and yeah, this is also true for all. So if we did all over this same generator here, all over gen, uh, the first thing that it's going to get is it's going to get this falsy value. So you know that the rest of them can't possibly be true. Uh, so it, it's, it stops before it even tries to get this second yield here. Um, but yeah, that's any and all. Uh, I'm going to show you kind of how I would go about implementing these uh, if I were running this. Of course, they're I think they're actually implemented in C um, in C Python, but we'll make our own versions of them. So we're going to have my any, and this is going to take an iterable, and we'll also have my all, which also takes an iterable. Um, and so from typing import iterable, so this is going to be an iterable of anything, iterable any. So import any as well, and this is going to return a bool. Iterable any, and this returns bool. <laughs> now, no, I realize it's confusing. Uh, we're talking about the built-in any. This any represents any type. <laughs> not, not to be confused with the function any that we're implementing. Okay, so for any, the default is false. So if any of nothing is false, so 
uh, we're gonna just say, you know, the base case here is that we're, we're false. And we're going to iterate through everything in this loop. And if we ever see anything that's true, we will return true. So for item in it, um, if item, so if that item is truthy, we are going to return true. Otherwise, if we didn't hit any true cases in this loop, after this loop exits, we will return false. And so this covers the case where like nothing in this, it, this uh, or this iterable is empty. So we just immediately do false. Um, so that covers that case. And uh, if we're doing the same for all. Uh, we want to find, you know, if we find something that's truth or falsy, we know that we can immediately return false. So we're going to do the same thing for item in it. If not item, return false. Otherwise, we will return true. And so that's how you can implement your own versions of these. If we do python3 dash i t dot pi, uh, and we do my any, so my any of an empty thing is going to be false by any of you know zero 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 is also going to be false if we were to put some value in here that would be true um if we took our generator from before well, i can't really copy and paste it so pretend like i took my generator it would also work for that as well and the same is true for my all my all of this is true um all of you know zero one one is going to be false um but if we have all of them true then it's going to be true now note that these values in here could be you know, they don't have to be numbers or booleans or anything. They just have to be things that are truthy. And that is also true for normal all here as well. So you can mix and match there. I don't believe there are any additional options to these. Could be wrong though. Yeah, no, no options for any and no options for all. So yeah, that's all you need to know about any and all. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. If you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.